Can I count it off? Yeah. Can I count yeah. it off? Yeah. Count up. One, two, three, four. Hi, Benny Greb here, and I'm very excited uh, for this opportunity to introduce this video, this great interview. I'm grateful for Meinl for putting this together, because you will get the chance now, and myself will get the chance now, to listen from and hear from two of my favorite and two of the most legendary drummers of all times, Clyde Stubblefield and Jebel Starks. And it is so exciting for me because I know that when I look back, whenever I learned most and progressed the most and, and was most excited was when I was able to go to the source of something. And, and there are a lot of bands that play like bands that came before, were influenced like this and that. A lot of people who talk about things that came before, but it's very special to hear it from the original. And so this is source material now. This is the original stuff. You will hear them talk, you will hear them answering questions and these are guys that not only influenced musicians all around the world, if you're a drummer you're influenced by them. I don't care whether you even know. Um, if you're influenced by other drummers you're also influenced by them because those other drummers were probably influenced by them directly. So everyone is influenced by them indirectly. It's immeasurable what impact they really had. Um, not only did they have an impact on musicians, drummers, but bass players, all musicians, but they had an influence on music history. Um, the whole electronic music, the, the hip hop uh, scene, everything after that was shaped by the way they played and, and by their input. And so even if you're not a musician, you were influenced by those guys because it wasn't only a music history impact that they had, but it was a cultural impact that they had. So this is very exciting stuff. So I will not talk anymore. I'm looking forward to this as much as you do probably. So here they are, uh, Clyde Stubblefield and Jebel Starks. That to me, that's so beautiful to see, you know, you guys' attitude and spirit behind, you know, you know, sharing what was given to you guys and, and you Oh, know. we had great attitudes, Jabbo and I. Yeah. You know, we never went outside. We always stayed right in there. You know, yeah. I never, 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 I, I don't feel, I think that I have a gift that was given to me. Lord gave me a gift. And I've, 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 pat, I've tried to pass, what I've done is if you're using my palate, i passed it on to you. Right. And which is a good thing, you know, that's a good thing. To, I to never expected that. to play drums <laughs> with an artist, a big show. I never thought about that. And I was wondering, how can I do it? And I just started doing it. And uh, it was amazing to me. Like I say, we didn't get paid for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Session, studio session. I, we didn't get paid for them. We just got our salary every week. And uh, <coughs> that's amazing. We never got paid, and uh, but we, we performed. Performed real well. And you know, at that time, they were you were being used, genuinely used. Yep. Mm -hmm. In the music world, you were being general, which is still happening today. Mm -hmm. You're being used, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I recorded a lot of things that you probably heard, but don't know who was playing on them anyway. I did things out of Houston, out of Duke Peacock Records. Almost everything that was came out of there at one time when I was by the band, mm -hmm. and but you never heard, you never heard. Well, this was this was the rhythm section. These were the horn section. You never heard that till till right near the end of all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you never heard who contributed this. To this artist and his and his his uh and, and his 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 repertoire, I did things with gospel groups out of there that I never never heard. I never know who, 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 if they did it or not, but I did that. Mm -hmm. I've done sessions. I came here in Nashville and did a session with a gospel group. I think I made 
forty dollars, thirty five or forty dollars when that happened, man. I, and like I said, you don't get, you really wasn't getting paid for Even what you were road. doing. Even going on the road, you guys wasn't getting paid that much, huh? Oh no no no! I had to get a salary on the road. We got a salary. Now, when I went when I went on the road with Bobby Bland, see, <laughs> but we paid our was, own way. This was we paid our hotel, we paid our cleaning bill, we paid our food bill out of the salary. We was the only so thing really like you weren't getting paid. Then. The only yeah, well it was it was real cheaper then, but you didn't you didn't you had to pay for. You're cleaning this stuff. Mm -hmm. You had to buy your food. You had places that you could go because in the segregated years, that right. were places that you, the black artists you just couldn't go. Right. They they did you weren't a, they did they didn't. It was a segregated place that you knew you couldn't go in there. You could go around to the back if you felt like that. But there was always pe people in different cities that had homes that you stayed in, and there was re the black restaurants that you went and you ate in. The only you know, thing we got was the the ride. Yeah, to and, the gig and then and when I started playing, man, would you would you believe I made twenty two dollars and fifty cents a night? Wow! And that was only the nights that I that you that we played. If we didn't play, I didn't get paid. Well, today I look at it. Uh, you know, Brown has passed away, but I look at it. Jabo and I should get something extra, uh, like some of the people uh, right now is getting from James Brown's death. Javo and I should get something, but we're not getting a thing. Only yeah. thing we getting is like people mentioning mentioning us on a song. That's it. But well, for us, you get you get some we when deserve, everybody left. I we got, deserve I got, I got my name put there where I could get yeah. some royalties from things. I never expected it. I don't think he expected I was gonna get anything, but I do. We deserve today a, a great big, great big check. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, you do, I agree. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you know, you know, what's for you, you'll get it. If it's for you'll get it. Yeah. But then again, you have to think about that. I, I made a salary when I was with Bob and the reason I left is I had my my wife and I, we had our first child. Right. And I, I couldn't work by the night anymore. I had to have a salary. salary. Well, J they Jabbo, didn't want to pay me. Jabbo was angry when uh, they didn't use me on that $25,000 drum interview and stuff. Uh, the James Brown interview and the drummers, everybody in the band, that band made twenty five grand or more. I didn't get nothing because he put another drummer in my place. And uh, Jabbo was angry. He was very angry because he said, this guy didn't make none of his. His Clyde made them. Yeah, but see, that was, like I say, that was jealousy and envy mm -hmm. into that. But like I say, when I left and went with, when I went with Jane Brown, it was strictly business with me for money. Mm -hmm. and he, he offered me a double of salary, and I got that. When I'm going, when I'm going home, I'm going home. I, I'm, I got a, a certain amount of money. I sit home every week. Now that comes first. Right. And after that, then whatever else is there, then that. But but I had to have a salary, man. I had, I had a child, man. I had my mm. family. I, right. I but see, and that's the same thing that Clyde was speaking of when we did that piece to go in that museum in Seattle. Right. It uh, uh, the 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 guy that they bought in had nothing to do with what we were putting in there. And what we did. Correct. It was Clyde and I. Right. And I think they led they led Clyde right up to the last minute. Then they said they weren't going to use it. Right. Well, you know, and that's that's. Special. It hurts, man. It, yeah, it really, it really, hurts. it really imagine. hurts you to know that people could be that small, right. and, and 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 do those kind of things, man. It just and, and it I bothers heard, you, man. I heard twenty five thousand dollars. I didn't get. You know, that that made me feel so bad because I made hits with Brown. Right. And right. you know, this other drummer didn't, that they got. Mm -hmm. He didn't make no hits with him. Uh, Jabbo and I, we made all the hits with James Brown. That's true. Besides Clayton Philly, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But then again, you know, you, you say, okay, that's done. It still leaves a bit of taste, but it's done. Mm -hmm. Right. So you move on from that. Yeah, right. That's what goes to show, you, 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 with every good, you get bad, too. So, yeah. So that's yeah. what. That's but you have to be able. You have to be able to to accept 
the bad. The bad as long as well as uh-huh. you do the good. Mm-hmm. It does it does make you feel any better. Right. But when you when you make up when you decide that you're gonna you have made up your mind to, to accept it, then all of the good things that you miss start eventually coming back around to you. Mm-hmm. Right. It, eventually you'll you'll reap you'll reap it. It it will yeah. come back, you mm-hmm. know. So what would y'all say to a young musician? Who aspire? Who look at your careers and look at you today? I'll tell them. I'll tell them this. I still see you playing. I'll what? tell them in this. You know, nowadays, there are music. There, and I'm speaking of drummers now. Right. There's instructors for drummers now. When I came right. along, there was never an instructor. I never had a lesson. Mm-mm. But there are less. There are drummers. There are lessons. That, that teach us to teach drummers Correct. The, the way to play, uh, what they're playing. Teach you to read, teach you to be able to do it. But I say this much, I can teach you about the road. The road can be as good as you make it or it can be as detrimental as you make it. When you go out there, you go out, got to go out there, okay, I have never been in this kind of a position or these places, but have your mind set to be businesslike when you go out there, hey, I will come, I will work for you. We will work out a salary. We'll work out a way of doing it. And when you start making that money, pay your income tax, mm-hmm. trust you. Mm-hmm. Trust your instinct. Don't go to somebody and say, well, I'm going to trust you to take care of that business. No, be able to take care of your own business. Right. Be able to go out there and it does not take your drugs or alcohol <coughs> for you to play what gift the Lord has given you to you to play. Right. It's out there. It's going to be there. But you got to be man or woman enough right. to know what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Don't destroy your own and body. And demand respect. That's mm-hmm. what you get. Yeah, yep. you get that respect. You demand it. And you can do it. You know, now, if you don't, if they don't like what you're doing or you don't like what the people that you're so around you around don't, do that with leave Brown. them. Yeah. You couldn't do that with Brown. You couldn't demand respect with Brown. Well, well, you know what though? Now, now, I listen to class, but I'm gonna tell you something. I never had a problem with James. No, he didn't. I never had a problem Mm-mm. because I, I walked up in his dressing room like I'm talking to you when I got hot. I said, you know what? I see the way you find these guys out here on the road. You take their money. I see that. I said because in the first place, I don't fault you for what you're doing. I fault them. Because when you go, when you join Jane Brown, he gave you his rules and his regulations. Mm-hmm. You, he told you what he wanted you to do, how he wanted you to do it. He paid you if you said whatever you gonna work for. If you told he told you, well, I'm gonna work. You work for this amount of money. He paid you that. Right. But he paid you to do as he wanted you to do. Mm-hmm. And if if you and my boss, I do what you tell me to do. And if I don't like it, I walk away. Mm-hmm. But I told him right off the bat. I don't mind, I'll work for you, but you will not take a fine from me. And when I said that, I said, I don't pay fine. He looked at me and said, well, wait a minute, why you don't pay fine? I said, because in the first place, I'm working for you. You tell me what you want me to do and how you want me to do it, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Plus, it was a re- disrespect. And when I don't feel like I'm doing it, I said, you don't have to say nothing to me. I'll walk away from you. I said, but if you take some money from me, I'm gonna take three times and that much back from you. You already, uh, you already paying for your cleaning bill, your hotel, and your food, and then uh, uh, from my salary, they find me and take it out. You know, and, and uh, I done already paid these other things. I had a family. Well, well, I just didn't, I just didn't go for it. He told me, said, I respect you for that. You're a man. I know, I know that. But you see, here's another thing too. <laughs> I drove equipment truck. Mm-hmm. I drove the bus. And that's, what, that's not what you was asked to do. I was, a dr- I was supposed to be the drummer in the band. But he didn't have nobody to do that that he could trust to do it. I did that. I trained whoever he bought out there to drive that truck and all. I did that. I went. I bought two buses for him out of Dallas. I told you about that. Yeah. I bought two of them out of Dallas for him. I drove the buses. I drove the tractor and trailer mm-hmm. that we ran it until yeah. the, the guy that was driving it could not stand to be a man, I'm telling you the truth now, could not stand to to be around 
the black musicians the way they were, because he came out of Macon himself. No, out of Augusta. He was an ex-policeman. He couldn't stand it. He did his best. He drove the bus. And Henry, whatever his last name is, I never, but he drove the bus. He never read it. And when we got the track and trailer, he begged and he talked. And I like, can I drive the, 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 the truck? Can I drive the equipment truck? Can I do this? And he went to James with that rather than come to me because I was in charge. And when he went to James, James looked at him and said, did you see Mr. Starks about it? Well, no, I come. He said, well, I don't talk to you. Don't talk to me about it. Whatever he said, go. Mm -hmm. and, and he left it like that. And he kept bugging me and bugging me. And finally, we got a bus driver. And finally, I said, okay. Now, he loved that to death because he had never made the kind of money he was getting paid. He had never had the experience of running like he did. Well, I wouldn't have done what Jabo done. If Dad had said something to me, would you drive this, would you do that? I would have said, no, I quit. <laughs> but Jabo, he was into it, so. Yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the business part of it out there. Yeah. I did learn, you know, and it was and a learning experience. it helped you today? To, to yes, to yes, today. yes, mm -hmm. yes. And he had his business together. I, it, it, it helped me. It really helped me, man. I learned. I learned a lot of things. I learned a lot. Of, I learned things that not to do. Mm -hmm. I would never disrespect you. Right. And if I got a problem with you, I'm man enough to call you. Call and tell you, you and I talk about it. And get right. we understand. Mm -hmm. it. Right. And I don't try and pit you against him. Mm -hmm. That's that's backbiting and stuff. I don't do that. And when it comes to Brown and myself being an argument about wanting to argue with Brown. I, I, I had to argue with the manager, uh, some of the help, because uh, Brown wouldn't argue with me. I don't know why, what reason, but he wouldn't argue with me. But he have his manager argue with me. So you had to do all the business with the manager? Yeah. And the manager well, was not right. The manager <laughs> was a creep. See, that was a different with me. Yeah. If that was a problem, I didn't have to go to no manager. I don't mm -hmm. care where James was. I go to the dressing room, get on the door. Who is it? I said, I, 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 it's me. I'm going to see James. Well, he said, Mr. Brown don't want to see you. I'm going to talk to you about this. He couldn't do that to you me. Know? Right. He couldn't do that couldn't to do me. That to I, I, I'm going to talk to James. I go in there and talk to him straight up, just like we are. Mm -hmm. Straight up, I talk to him. Cause yeah. I, see, if, you, if I talk to you, when it gets back to him, it it's not it's not yeah. what I it's not what I said the way I said it. Right. And a lot of the things that the manager would come to us out just the the crowd, different musicians, wasn't true. Brown had nothing to do with it. The manager made it up. 